we're not open yet. No, and you won't be. Come again, mister? I said this club is not going to open. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? I certainly don't. Sit down. Sounds almost like a band now. I mean, almost. Those guys are practically perfect. All I need is a couple more years rehearsal. <laughs> How did you like it, Lamb Chow? You know, you promised me this would be a flop. Don't worry, you can't make money either way. If the club clicks, we'll buy you out. If it lays an egg, you're hooked. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, if you could, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you two mind holding hands in your own time? You know we're paying the boys by the hour now. That's right. Come on, we gotta rehearse. Don't get lost. I sure won't, honey child. Why, uh, why don't you just tie a bell around his neck? Eh? <laughs> 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 Say. You're doing all right with that big oil man. Yes, but don't forget I'm your girl, and I'm only being sweet to him for your sake. Or do you want me to fall for him? Why, Elaine, where could you get an idea like that? Hmm. See you later, pork chop. Jeff, we're in trouble. Yeah, overtime problem if we don't finish this dress rehearsal. Save it, will you, kid? Be right with you after this number. Close the curtains, Al. All right, everybody, we're going to rehearse First Street. <laughs> I never could see why happiness should be a planned routine. By that I mean to say... You mean good things should happen to casually happen upon the scene? For instance, take my lucky day. I happened to walk down First Street. I could have gone down Second Street, but I happened to walk down First Street. And you happen along. I usually walk down Third Street. But heaven planned that we should meet, so I happen to walk down First Street. And, and you, you happen, happen along. along. I found a highway up to the sky. You wandered my way. And, and we, we wound up in paradise. paradise. I'm lucky I went down First Street. I wouldn't trade that little street for all of the wealth on Wall Street. Cause you happen along. I happen to walk down A Street. I could have gone down B or C, but I happen to walk down A Street. You happened along. I usually go down D Street, but D to me is very close to E. There I was smack on F Street. Still I couldn't go wrong. You knew where I'd walk. Merely a guess. There on the sidewalk, we both walked into happiness. We went by G Street. Until we came to I and J, and J became OK Street, cause you happened along. I happened to walk down First Street. I could have gone down Second Street. But I happened to walk down First Street, and you happened along. I usually walk down Third Street. But haven't planned that we should be. So I happen to walk down First Street. And you happen to walk. I found a highway up to the skies. You wandered my way. And we wound up in paradise. I'm lucky I went down First Street. I wouldn't trade that little street for all of the wealth on Wall Street. Cause you happen to walk. I do, darling. Honey, you are absolutely mediocre. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeff. I still don't think we'll be in shape to open tomorrow night. It doesn't make any difference. 
Who are you? Uh, who are you? He asks you first. It just happens that you're living next door to the great maestro, Ladislaus Cassell. No. Oh, his highbrow music won't bother us. Yes, but your lowbrow music will bother him now that he's back from South America. Uh, don't you read the morning papers? Who gets up in the morning? You don't seem to understand. I've already closed five nightclubs that tried to open here. It's impossible for Maestro Cassell and his granddaughter to work with this, uh, this noise going on next door. Then uh, why don't they move? That's a good suggestion. Oh, don't be ridiculous. So, as their manager, I thought I'd save you a lot of time and money by warning you that unless you turn your kind of music off and keep it off, we'll be forced to call in the license commissioner. Is that clear? Sure. No more music. No more music? No more music. Good day. Boys. Thanks, boys. We've got to figure this thing out. Can he really close us up? Sure. Well, then what's our next move? Did you ever hear of mass suicides? Now, don't you folks get to worrying on my account. Of course, I'll lose less if you close before you open, but then that's life. Is it? Yeah. Come on, sugar. Change your clothes and we'll see how we look in a new mink coat. Anything to make you happy. I wonder how we'll look in an old wooden barrel. That's slice. My dear, lovely. Such timber, such... I smell smoke. Don't you smell smoke, madame? Don't you, Vicky? No. Grandfather, do you smell smoke? No, no. Just New York you smell. That nice monoxide carbon. New York. New York. I told you we should never have brought her voice here. But I like New York. Even though I haven't seen any of it. The voice? She should have a little light. Like your dear Lucia. Remember, Milan? When I conducted La Scala and you sing? In the little gay restaurant we find together? Oh, such spaghetti, such ravioli, such heartburn. <laughs> there never has been such a voice. Maestro, you married, madame. Nothing improves a woman's voice like marriage. Please, Martin. Isn't being engaged enough? Listen, Vicky's so young still. 
The way she is engaged is not enough, and the way she will be married is too much. Ladislaus! Luch, you're Luch. Have you forgotten Milan? Milan, the, the little lake in the park, and the little boat on the lake, and the little uh, canoodling with it? <laughs> canoodling? What a frightful word. Well, I don't think it's so frightful. But what is it? Canoodling, canoodling. It means uh, she's making a little, little light romancing. With maybe two, three nice boys find out what love is. Why not? Oh, don't you listen to him, Vicky. Your grandfather is... And I know, an old man. But with one or two memories, before Vicky settles down yet, one or two memories she should have. My strong Cassell, are you implying I, that... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Implying? I'm not sure what does that mean, but I suspect you are right. It wouldn't be good for Vicky to marry anyone without falling in love first with someone. Ladislaus, please! Vicky, go up to your room and take your rest. Yes, Grandmother. And don't forget your lemon juice. Yes, Martin. Grandfather, before you married, did you fall in love with... with someone? Well... Uh, under the present circumstances, I don't think that I should answer. Of course not. I was the only girl in your grandfather's life. Wasn't I, Ladislaus? Oh, well... Uh, you were the last. You two... Run along, Vicky. Oh, and Nez, I hate to go to bed in the daytime. Look, it's so wonderful outside. Ever since you were 14. You take your siesta in the afternoon. <laughs> your voice. Oh, I'm sick of my voice. Every morning I practice, every afternoon I practice. And now it seems I have to get married just on account of my voice. Never mind. Come on. Get my blue suit. I'm going out. But my precious Nina, you need the rest. I don't need any rest. Go on, Inez. Hurry up. All right. Just as you, as you wish. Any brainstorm yet? <laughs> you know, the granddaughter looks like a hip character. Hip? A character who's done nothing but study opera for five years? What a waste of face and figure. Doesn't have to be wasted. Meaning what? Well, look. The girl's lived in South America all this time. She'll probably fall like a ton of bricks for the first good-looking, clean-cut American boy she meets. <laughs> What's that got to do with you? <sighs> well, who's the charm boy of this outfit? Who makes all the other wolves in town look like Little Red Riding Hood? But of course! <laughs> Steve! <laughs> Steve? <laughs> well, he's all right, too, I guess. Say, what are you driving at? Well, it's very simple. One of us gets an introduction to the girl, makes her a fall for him, tells her how important the club is to us, and boom, we open. <laughs> I can't miss. Yeah. Jeff, we're going to be married. Listen, baby, what's more important to you, your happiness or our success? Shall I tell you? Shall we go? Let's do. Yeah, I know what I'll do. Yeah? I use the old charm system. You know. Haven't we met some place before? In Monte Carlo? The Casbah, behind an old eight ball, each. No. <laughs> nice try. Thanks. Hey, that's her. I mean, that's she. Cassell's granddaughter. What a fuselage. Yeah, let's get going. Yeah, I guess I better. Wait, wait a minute. This was my idea. <laughs> this is no time for an amateur, my boy. Amateur? Me? It's a nice tune, isn't it? Yes, when it's sung correctly. You were flat. Nice tune, isn't it? Boy, did she give you the freeze over. <laughs> flat, was I? Right on your high F. Let me show you how a real wolf operates. Wait a minute, I'm going to get to know that doll so I can give her the air. Huh? Remember how we picked up that cookie in Albuquerque? Yeah, and how the cops picked us up? What about that treatment we gave Mary Lou in Memphis? Yeah, you got Mary Lou. I got a split lip. Hey, what about Milwaukee? No, no. Now, that's the one where you socked me. Want us to open the nightclub, or don't you? Yeah, sure, but... Well, all right, but when you smack me, don't get carried away. Remember, you love me. So come on.
a lovely day, isn't it? A uh, nice night, wasn't it? <laughs> well, that day went fast. Will you please go away? With you? Well, sure, babe. Oh, let me go. Now, let's not play hard to get. Let go of her. But I like it. Can't you see this young lady is not a babe? Now, take a powder, John. Say, listen, who asked you to attend this party? This young lady happens to be a friend of mine, I hope. Now, you get out of here. Oh, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> You won't get away with this, bustling into my favorite street. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I had to resort to fisticuffs, Miss Cassell. Miss Cassell, well, how did you know my name? Miss Victoria Cassell. But I knew it even before then. Everyone who loves music knows the name Cassell. But I didn't know what you looked like. Or that I'd meet you. Or what you looked like. Well, I, I think you've had a pretty good look by now. Goodbye. Do you want me to call a policeman? No. Isn't a girl ever safe on the street in this city? Wouldn't life be dull if she were? Yes. But I really shouldn't even be talking to her. Girls often talk to me. I find it a very simple method of communication. What's the harm? After all, we'll probably never see each other again. Ever. No, we'll probably never see each other again. Ever. That is, unless you think you ought to take me into your family, tell them how much you uh, owe me. How much I what? Remember? Our friend? Why, of course. They'll be very grateful. I consider this a great honor, Mr. Sell. my grandfather. He plays over the movements of the symphonies he's going to conduct. Grandfather, this is Mr. Ross. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm very indebted to him. Uh, bill collector? No, I collect young ladies in trouble. I'm afraid I do not understand. Or do I? Uh, she was being molested on the street, and I, well, I... I only did what you would do, sir. Uh, you, you unmolested her. That's right. Well, thank you, my boy. Please sit down. And he can sing, too, Grandfather. Oh, you sing? Is that how you frighten the men away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's, he's got a wonderful voice. Oh, now, take it easy. You, you sing professional? Well, I, I guess you'd call it that. Opera? Mm, well, uh, perhaps concert? Uh, no. A church singer, maybe? <laughs> I'm afraid it's pretty far from that. I, uh, I might as well confess, Mr. Cassell, I uh, operate the little nightclub next door. The one I hear you object to. You sing in a nightclub? I, I do not object to nightclubs, my boy. No? No. When I was young, I sang in one. Oh, my grandfather. So? Just for a little while. And it wasn't called nightclub, it was called beer hall. And then I met my wife. She was my wife when I met her, but she's my wife now. <laughs> and together we have tried to make good music our life work. Mr. Cassell, there's more than one kind of good music. You like symphony, I go for swing. Now, uh, when I came in, you were playing a passage from Mendelssohn. Uh, do you mind? Please. Uh, suppose it were played like this. <laughs> that flute I have many years. I never knew it could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cassell, before you try to close this up, why don't you bring the family down to our opening? I will reserve a ringside table for you. On the house, of course. I don't know. My, my wife, she goes to Philly nearly for the weekend. You mean Philadelphia, Grandfather. <laughs> Philly nearly for the weekend. At the benefit to sing. But that makes it perfect. Martin's going with her. My manager. We don't like him. Well, may we expect you? Yes, you can expect us. But that we come, I am not sure. Well, here's hoping. Uh, do I go out the same way? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Mr. Ross. You don't know what this means to me. You don't know what this means to me. How did it work? <laughs> great. They're even coming to the opening, I think. Oh, that's... Well, boy, you did a great job, and I'm proud. <laughs> oh, interfere with me and my picking up, will you? Huh? Hi, darling. 
you like my last number? They all loved you, honey. But do you? Excuse me a minute, will you, Elaine? Don't make it any longer than that. Oh, Steve! Isn't that Mr. Cassell? That's him. Well, shall I turn my fatal charm on him? Save it for Jeff. Good evening. Hello. Maestro Cassell, this is an honor. I don't know how she talked me into it. Grandfather, didn't you promise to say you talked me into it? <laughs> Steve! Isn't this Mr. Cassell, the great conductor? In the flesh, thank you. <laughs> Miss Cassell, Maestro Cassell, may I present Sue Jackson? How do you do? How do you do? Let's sit down, shall we? I reserved a table just in case. Here we are. How do you like our band? That's that low fellow you saved me from in the street. He does look familiar. Horrible? Horrible? I don't get this. Doesn't she know that you know Jeff? Yes, yes, she knows and he knows. Don't you know? Victoria, my dear, do you know what happened when you met Steve? It was what they call in America, pick me up. <laughs> really? Well, it was sort of a planned coincidence. Angry? Well, I ought to be. But I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Let me know after the next number. Sue, you better go change your complexion. Right. See you after I kill the people. Mm -hmm. She kills the people? It's murder, Jack. <laughs> There's a mellow Georgia gent uh, who can hardly uh, pay his rent. But all those hip cats called his gent a solid citizen of the solid south. He's a trumpet playing fool when he isn't playing fool. He packs more kicks than an army mule. The solid citizen of the solid south that a ball. He's the king of them all. He really reigns supreme. And no oh my, what a popular guy when the moon is on the beach. It's amazing how he clicks with those snooty highbrow chicks. Those babes forget their etiquette and yell, well, shut my mouth. What a solid citizen of the solid song. I'm a mellow Georgia gent I, I can't hardly pay my rent But all the hepcats call this gent A solid citizen of the solid south I, I'm a trumpet playing fool When I ain't making with the pool I got more kick than an army mule I'm a solid Citizen of the solid south at a ball. I'm the king of them all. I really reign supreme. And oh my, I'm a popular guy. When that moon is really on the beam, it is amazing how I click with those snooty, snooty eyebrow chicks. Those gals forget their etiquette. They'll well shut my mouth. And they did. I'm a solid citizen of the solid South.
mind yet? No. Maybe you can while we're dancing. Martin's never let me dance. Let's see if Martin's wrong about dancing, too. I love dancing. Well, we haven't even started yet. So different from music. Oh. Boy, is that singing hard on my feet. Oh. Hey, where is everybody? Oh, they make a nice couple, but Steve's not the marrying kind. Me neither. Forty years ago. Then I met Madame and Bingo. I have a wedding ring around my neck. But I love it. <laughs> Maybe your wife doesn't understand you. Trouble is, she does. Oh, a man with your charm and those continental manners. You should lead your own life. Make all the decisions in your house. For 40 years, I keep saying that to myself. But oh, only to myself. And... <laughs> You're sweet. And I know you won't close our club. Wait, wait. You really think I'm sweet? Oh, but of course I do. I always wanted to meet a man like you. <laughs> I think we have company under the table. But that's only me. I always like to play toesies. Don't you? Yes, of course, I love it, but married men, I am. Well, I'm almost a married woman. And I'm almost a married man. Excuse me, please, but your wife to be and me, we were just playing those. Oh, you were, eh? <laughs> Who's winning? Did I know what I wasn't doing? Goodbye, please. I come back later when I am alone. I think Martin is wrong about dancing. He's wrong about closing this club, too. So far, I think he's been wrong about everything that's right. What's the song they're playing? Oh, a little thing Jeff and I whipped up. Just what part did you whip up? The lyrics. Want to hear them? Now? Sure, why not? Just like we're alone. You think I don't love you. Oh, but I do. How can I show that I do? think I don't get blue, oh, but I do, though I get light-hearted too. First I'm singing, then I'm sighing, then I'm flying high above. think I don't know why, oh, but I do, I know that it's you I I don't know why, oh, 
Can you sing too, Steve? That's low fellow, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> hang on to that for a couple of hundred years. It's bound to be worth something. I'll get your coat, sugar. Anytime you boys get tired signing autographs, let's get going to Lamb Chop's party. Uh -oh. Party? I love parties. Yeah. This one's just for the cast, Grandpops. Oh. Wait a oh, minute. Oh, no, Elaine. Uh, please, please, why, why not the party in my house? Huh? huh? In, in my house. My, my wife, she's in Philly Mill, in, in Philly Dilly. <laughs> in, my wife, she, she don't know. In, in the cellar, cellar 12 cases of champ, and my wife don't know it either. Well, I'll tell you, we'll make a deal with you. If we drink up all your champagne, can we keep our place open? I don't know. My wife and my manager have already been done down making trouble, but please, I will try. Well, <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> Come on, everybody. I'll get the band. Steve, I want to see you. Spelled backwards, that means it's you she wants. <laughs> May I? Champagne, is that better than beer? You're not really going to Cassell's, are you? Certainly. You know why I'm being nice to them. Why don't you and Braden come along? I'm going to Lamb Chop's party, and I want you to come, too. Sorry, darling, but you forget one thing. I don't like to take orders. I do. <laughs> That's what it tastes like. <laughs> Martin's been wrong about everything. I think you're wrong even to mention his name. And um, that blonde? Elaine? She's harmless. Women are never harmless. It has something to do with, with being women. Steve, do you think a girl should fall in love before she gets married? I think it helps. No, I mean with, with someone. You better have a sandwich. Steve. Have you ever been in a boat on a lake in Milan? Not in the last couple of days. Have you? No. Grandfather says I should before I marry Martin. I don't think a quick row across the lake. Your grandfather said what? <laughs> well, he's not like most grandfathers. Sometimes he's almost human. Steve, we haven't a boat on a lake, but we have a balcony. Miss Martin, is he a good pistol shot? <laughs> what, what cooks, if I may ask? Looks like there's a little romance on the fire. I don't know how the guy does it. Well, all I know is that Vicky is too young and Steve is too experienced. No, 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 no. Any granddaughter of her grandmother can handle any man. A little kiss. Nobody died from it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Cassell, what is this? Don't you know? I'm beginning to suspect. Grandfather says... What was Grandfather saying? Well, well he liked it too. <laughs> Only with Grandmother. And this, uh, Miss Martin, would he approve? You know, for a wolf... You keep asking the silliest questions. In this deal, I've lost track of who is the wolf. <laughs> What's the matter? Look. What, what a hat. Why, that's outrageous. Grandmother and Martin. Uh-oh, curfew. There's something wrong with your meter. That's funny, the meter curfew. Hold it, hold everything. What, what, what's happening? What's the matter? Your ball and chain. Grandmother and Martin are here. Here they cannot be. Is this Philly Nilly? They're right outside. Martin's arguing with the taxi driver about the fare. That's Martin, all right. Come on, gang. We got to get out of here. To the back door. Come on, everybody. Grab all the glasses. Come on. Let's all go to Lamb Chop's party. Get all the through the back door. He could take it off his income tax. Goodbye, Grandpa. Goodbye, Don't do anything I do. Yes, I, I, I will do it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hurry, Grandfather. Yes, yes. What, 
why did you invite the people? But, Grandfather, you invited them. Don't talk back to your grandmother. Sing, sing, Dick of it. Sing. accommodations in Philadelphia. What's Vicky doing up so late? Her voice. We, with you, we, how can we sleep? For Vicky's voice is not good to lie in bed with indomania. It keeps her awake. Well, take my coat. Yes, my darling. <coughs> What's that? <laughs> Looks like a champagne bottle. Ladislas, you know what your doctor said. But one little bottle only. With you, we, my sweet soul, lonesome. I am. <laughs> one bottle? Why, here's a forest of them. I, I, I was just a cellar clean. What has been going on here? Don't, don't ask me. You won't believe me. I think this explains everything. The Bamboo Club. To Vicky, may all your kids be, be hepcats. Yes, we did go to the Bamboo Club, and we met some wonderful people. Yes, very wonderful. And I had the best time I've ever had in my life. Yeah, me, me, me too. Yes, I can see that you did. But can you see... She, you, Victoria, five years I've given to your voice. Oh, I know, Martin, how hard you worked, and I'm terribly sorry. But you were wrong about, about smoke and, and dancing and staying up late. And maybe you were wrong about my getting married. I'm not going to, at least not to you anyway. You, you canoodler! Such an indignity! Oh, Such an indignity! Oh, Everything happens to me. Oh, Inez, you'll never know how wonderful last night was. Surely. What time is it? Uh, Fifteen minutes after nine o'clock. Just three minutes later than the last time you asked me. I can't understand. What troubles you, Menina? The music should be playing by now. Oh, perhaps tonight they just start late. Perhaps I'd better go find out. Oh, oh but your grandmother. I don't think she'd like to go. Oh, I don't like this. I love it. Grandfather is who? Grandfather? Yes, I, I follow you. I, I know you are here. Grandfather, why is everything like this? Perhaps they just stop. Yeah? In time, everything just stops, my dear. Jeff! Jeff! What's happened here? Nothing. Everything's fine, just that we don't have to be bothered by customers anymore, that's all. Oh. Hello, Pops. Then it was Grandmother and Martin. Yes. They see big shoots in the city hall. I try to stop them, but in 40 years I learn your grandmother is non-stop. <laughs> then I won't see Steve or any of you. Why not? Because you can see me anytime. Unless I have to have a date with some other girl. And she better be me. <laughs> Poor kid's crazy about me. Hello, Sue. <laughs> I guess with you, we are in the dock house, no? 
Oh, I know you did everything you could. Then... Then you're not mad? Well, we're not, but right now Steve's got a hate on against all Cassells. Isn't that right, Jeff? St uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Steve. Oh. And when Steve gets sore, <laughs> he gets pretty mad. You go on home, Vicky, and forget all about us. Especially Steve. Come, my darling. Before your grandmother find us at home, and we are not there. Goodbye. I am glad you meet me. <laughs> that poor little naive character sure worked up over Steve. Yeah. I can't understand it. I mean, after all, he's just a man. What do you think you are, you big lug? Susan, can't you fight it off? Jeff, you know Steve isn't the right fellow for her. Well, that's what I thought. Now, you take a lovable guy like me, I mean... Jeff, hmm. why do you always have to worry about getting some girl when you know you can always get me? Well, I want to get some girl I can't get. Oh? Sue! No! Oh. 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 Help! <laughs> Who is it? Me is who it is. Are you my darling? I bring you warm milk and hot buns. Oh, my Here, the warm milk cools you off. I know what is eating your little heart outside him. You can't know. You've always had grandmother. I have no one. That's true. She doesn't understand me. She doesn't give me any freedom at all. And she treats you the same way. I know, I know. She tells me what I should eat and what I shouldn't drink. But all that she does because she loves me. And I let her because I love her. Forty years married to Ellen. Together we are something. Separately we wouldn't even be half of ourselves. I never thought of you and Grandmother exactly that way. Since you mentioned it, I never did either. <laughs> oh, my darling, don't you worry. I make everything right for you. Maybe something will happen. Thank you, Grandfather. I think maybe you'll make it happen. Sure, sure, I fix it. It will be easy. It will be easy. a little bit. Who are your friends? Mr. Ross. Oh, this is Mr. Ross at the piano. Thank you very much. We come for the piano. What? Hey, can't you come back in about 16 bars? We're still using it. Sorry, buddy, but we can use this piano ourselves. Oh, you follow songwriters, too? Yeah. My latest number is, you didn't keep up with the payment, so he's taking the piano away. <laughs> Blues. Push! So we'll see if there's any money out in that coffee pot, will you? Why, you two have to have an expensive apartment. I'll never know. As long as we can't pay any rent, we might as well not pay it on a place like this. It. You got it? Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Think not of it. Drop in any time. Bring the piano with you. Sure will. Goodbye. <laughs> nice fellas. Gentlemen. To the manor born. Now what? We've got to have a piano. Do nothing till you hear from me. Hey, where'd you get that? I always carry a spare. <laughs> where'd you get the money for it? Fire on the piano they just took out. Genius. Say, did our piano have puffs? <laughs> Hello? Who? No, um, he doesn't live here. You must have the wrong number. He doesn't live here. <laughs> it, one whole week and still you can't find Steve. She, that wife, she was so. I'll answer this wrong number. Hello? Oh, Grandpops. Steve, I, I must see you. And please, angry, don't be at me. Or at Vicky, too. I'm not angry, Grandpops. Where'd you get that idea? So glad am I to hear that. Uh, practically an hour away we are. Goodbye, Steve. <laughs> Bye. I uh, think I'll put this money away and... I think I'll help her. Not so fast. What's the idea of you two pals telling Vicky well, I... my idea. I like the girl. Well, maybe I like her, too. That's what I was afraid of. 
You know you're not right for her, is he? Hmm? Oh, no, no. No, Steve, what, what she needs is the more sincere type of wolf, like me. We'll let her decide that when she gets here. You. <sighs> you. You think I don't love you. Oh, but I do. I know that it's you I love. Oh, my darling, your new voice teacher will make you forget all about who you don't want to forget about. Maestro, where are you two going? I, I thought Vicky was going to rehearse. I postponed it. What? But she hasn't practiced for a whole week. How do you expect her to be ready for her debut? Oh, I will be. Grandfather just found a, a new little shop with real Vienna strudel. We come back after we buy the joint out. Come. But, but, but strudel's bad for the figure. Don't worry about my figure. Well. We don't have to stay long, do we, Grandfather? Well, wait and see. Grandfather, that sounds just like... Just like who is this? Oh. Well, this is a surprise. Hello, Hello. 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 I told you he wasn't sore at you. Grandfather, and I just had to tell you how sorry we were about the club. Oh, that's all right. May turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, we didn't have anything else to do, so we sat down and wrote a hit show. <laughs> then you're not angry? Angry? No. These two friends of mine were a little off the beam. Well, maybe we really ought to thank you. See, Elaine is working on her big gusher from Texas, trying to convince him he can really lose money if he packs our show. Well, look, how's about sharing our sandwiches and beer to celebrate in advance? Yeah, come on, Grandpa, sit down, huh? And <laughs> now you are cooking with gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, come here. Where are we going? We have a balcony, too. She's got to learn about the moon and the stars sometime, even if it is broad daylight. Now we can pick up right where we left off. Where was that? Don't you remember? Night on my balcony. When grandmother came home from Tilly Nilly. Hello, did she get the money? I mean, uh, come in, come in. <laughs> Hello. Isn't it wonderful? Lamb Chop's going to back the show. <laughs> That's right. She said the more I put in, the more I could lose. Just leave it to us. We'll take care of it. <laughs> well, Steve. I want to tell him. Uh, Steve. Uh, oh, Steve Ross. Oh, uh, uh, say, did you hear my latest song? You'll love it. Oh, oh, Steve. Oh, Steve Elaine is here. Up from Texas way. Very cute. <laughs> uh, of course I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> of course she's here, but of course you're here too, aren't you? I'll be a bit of lamb chop. Nice oh. to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> you know, you're the nicest singing teacher I ever had. Now, you stay on key. Pardon me. Oh, oh that's all right. Oh, hello, Elaine. How's, uh, how's our sugar daddy? Just a little goofier than usual. You know, he gets the weirdest ideas. What's he dreamed up now? This one will slay you. He wants to marry me. <laughs> that is weird. I'll say. You must admit you never thought of one like it. And he's given me a hundred thousand dollar wedding present. In cash. Hey, Lamb Chop, I got news for you. Here's to the unblushing bride. You mean you're a saying yes? Why not? Well, you've made me the happiest Lamb Chop in all of Texas. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> but what about the show? Look, when Lammy Pie spends any money on a turkey, it'll be for our Thanksgiving. Come on, Lammy. I hope you folks won't mind, cause suckers like me grow on trees. <laughs> Yeah, but where do the trees grow? Well, happy days. Keep smiling. <laughs> <laughs> smiling, she says. Well, one man's marriage is another man's poison. Well, does, does this mean you won't be able to put on the show? Yeah, that's all. That's all? That's enough. You said it. No dough, no show. Uh, unlucks everybody. The solution is solved. I give you the money. You what? Hey, what? Father, will you really? And why should you help us? Why? Because it is my fault the trouble you are in. I bring Vicky here, Elaine blows up, your money for show sure goes up in smoke. This has got to be a dream. But three catches there. Uh-oh. Uh your dream is over. One, the little matter of a double-jointed bank account with my wife. But that I unjoint easy. 
to no publicity. Oh, nobody will know, not even grandmother. You, you mean it's especially grandmother. And number three? He said he was only kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. It is that I, I have a young lady friend. I want to play in the show. Why, Grandpops, you old rascal, you. Uh, me, maybe not so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Her figure, she's like this. <laughs> and oh, she can sing. <laughs> who, uh, who is this name with a beautiful uh, uh, voice? Vicky, of course. Vicky? Vicky? Why, she goes in, my money goes in. Well, Vicky can sing opera, yeah, but can, can she sell swing? Can she yeah. straight up and fly right? Can she, uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not only can she do that, but also can she do what? What? No! Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Who Here are some more things. One more thing to go in is out. Lucia, you are going away only for a month, not a year. I must look my best, Ladislaus. Not many retired artists are invited to sing at this Mexico City festival. Mm -hmm. And to think they telegraphed me to fly there by airplane. It was the only way. It... <laughs> I mean, darling, if you must fly, there's nothing like an airplane. That must be Martin now with the taxi. He's always so prompt. Mm -hmm. Very, very prompt, always, yes. I still don't understand why you need so many blank checks. Oh, the, the, the checks, darling, uh, just for my personal expenses. You know, our double-headed bank account, it needs your signature as well. Of course. Yes. Uh, goodbye, Ladislaus. <laughs> Be a good boy. I will try it, my darling. By the way, don't make out those checks for too much. Oh, no, no, no. Ju just for enough. Because I keep only a few hundred dollars in our checking account. Bye-bye, Mattis Loss. Some more bills. Costumes, lights, sets. They're beginning to squawk. I'll take care of them. Mr. Cassell will be here tonight. Oh, fine. We're accumulating quite a stack of bills. Yeah. Don't worry. Grandfather will take care of them. His credit's good. The only thing is they're beginning to ask for cash instead of credit. <laughs> bills, bills, bills. I'm the backer and all I got is a problem. Say, Mr. Cassell... You will get paid. Don't make... Oh, Sue, excuse me. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cassell. How are you? Oh, Mr. Cavallaro. How is my favorite piano player? All right, fine. So you're just in time to see our Thousand Dreams number. Won't you have a seat? Thousand Dreams. Couldn't it be only a hundred?
How, how much cost this number? Well, no, no, uh, don't, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. That makes a total outlay of about 30,000 so far. So far, so bad. I, I mean, so good. Oh, and I, I ordered the drapes for the finale, too. Drapes. I think I go to bed now and count myself 30,000 black sheep. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Grandfather. Good night. Guess the excitement's too much for Grandpops. Mm-hmm. I'm really worried about him. He hasn't gained a pound in days. No, no, there's nothing to worry about. The show's going to be great. Everything's going to turn out swell. Before an opening, it's always like this. Sure. So great. Everything swell. Hit notices, your name and lights, lots of money. So that you can marry Sue or Elaine or, or Jeff. I don't think I'll be marrying Jeff. Say, what's the matter? What's worrying you? Oh, not a thing. Now, what's all this nonsense about marriage? Well, you'll be marrying somebody someday. I'm not so sure. After all, marriage is a very common thing. What? Well, I mean, it, it's very ordinary. Well, that is, most people do it. Practically everybody in the world gets married. How'd you ever come to that conclusion? Well, they, they look married. And what kind of a look is that? Oh, happy. I've seen some very sad husbands. Most of them are happy. Listen, marriage isn't everything the poet's given. And you're wrong about me. I'm a freelancer. You're a good kid. You deserve the best. I don't want the best. I want you. Vicky, you're a little girl on a balcony, waiting for a gallant night on a white charger to come and carry her off into the clouds. Yes. I never rode a horse in my life. We're out of step, baby. You're just lucky I haven't handed you my old line. Lucky? Well, most girls. Yes. That is... Yes. Well, usually they... Usually they what? Good night, Vicky. Alanis. <laughs> It would be nice for you to walk me home. Well, that's all right. Um, you don't have to go in just yet, do you? Well, it's rather late, don't you think? Um, couldn't we sit down here for a little while? Well, it's kind of chilly. We could uh, walk around the block. Again? Maybe uh, you'd like this around your shoulders. Uh, no, no, I, I'm fine, really. I'm really fine. Jeff. Hmm. Hmm? Oh, nothing. I just said Jeff. Why? It's such a beautiful name. Jeff? And you're such a beautiful Jeff. out of one of those, you you got to come out slowly, Sue. Otherwise, you get the bends. Good night, Jeff. Yes, you certainly are. Isn't it? Don't tell my mother, will you? Winners, what's new? Plenty. Is Steve around? Yep, just getting ready to go on. Thanks, pal. I wonder what a real cowboy would think of these outfits. I wonder what a horse would think of. You two make me feel like I'm back in Texas. Hello, Lynn. Yeah, I thought you were getting married. I suddenly lost interest after Lammy Pie put $100,000 in my bank account. Oh, you're so sentimental. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Could you use a new leading lady? Thanks, we already have one. 
Then maybe I could buy him as a backer. Yeah, that's not no. a bad. We don't need any help. Thanks. Uh, no, no. Uh, stick around anyway to see the show. I'll see you around the corral. All right, girls. On stage for the calico number. Come on, let's go. Dim them down. A gal in calico down in Santa Fe used to be her Sunday bow till I rode away. Do I want her? Do I want her love? Yes, sirree. Will I win her? Will I win her love? Wait and see. Working with a rodeo, go from town to now, see most every kind the gal, every kind the gal, but who made my heart sing? Yippee! -yi. Yippee! Oh, my, my little, little gal, gal in calico. can have your gals dressed in silk and satin and those that drape their shape with crepe de sheen. Now you take your city gals that go around high hat thinking they look swell and velveteen. When they're wrapped in sable, I'm not able to imagine how they look. I'm just a country boy. I don't see this. And every country boy knows a fancy cover doesn't make a bull. There's a girl in Calico, uh, down in Santa Fe, used to be her Sunday bow, uh, till I rode away. Do I want her? Do I want her love? Yes, sir. Will I win her? Will I win her love? Wait and see. Town. See most every kind of gal, every kind of gown, but who made my heart sing? Yippee, yippee, oh, oh, my little gal in Calico. Vicky. That kid's climbing up walls about you. 
She's not my type. She's a nice girl. Well, all I can say is my idea sure worked out. Remember back at the club, I said, make the daughter fall for you and our troubles are over? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got to add it to you, boy. You're the real wolf after all. <laughs> Way off that wolf gag, will you? Huh? What did I say? Come in. May I come in for a minute? Yeah. Yes? Of course, Grandfather. Do you see the calico number? Yes, I saw it. What's the matter? Didn't you like it? Oh, it I liked fine. And so would everybody, if anybody could see it. What do you mean? The show, it won't open. Won't open? That's all right. It, it's because of the money I don't cut. Oh, but you must have some money. Well, some I got, but the enough I don't cut. Everything I try. Hmm? What will we do? Do? We do nothing. We, we close. Oh, but, but what about Steve? I know, Vicky, it's my fault. I, I should have crossed my bridges before I lived. Rich man I am, yet I have no money. No. Come in. Oh, Mr. Cassell. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no, no, come in. It is I who goes. No, don't go, Grandfather. I just caught that number. You may be pretty good in time. Thank you. In time, but time she doesn't have. In fact, the last time was the last time. I don't get it. A long story it takes to tell it, and financial matters a woman does not ever understand. I do. You're broke. I don't think it concerns you anyway, Miss Winters. Oh, yes, it does. It concerns all of us. And if Santa Claus here will excuse us, I'd like a private word with Angel Puss. What did she say? And if you're smart, you'll listen. You'd better go, Grandfather. Yes, Miss Winters. Grandfather and I have finally decided there is no merit in jazz. So I'm dropping out of the show and going back to opera. I hope this doesn't upset your plans, Vicky. Oh. Upset our plans? It upsets my stomach. I don't understand it at all. That doesn't sound like Vicky. Hey, you try it this time. It can't be busy all day. This whole thing must be a game. Yes, it's very funny, too. <laughs> Get your dialing finger ready. You're next. Is it ringing? Yes. Hello? Hello, Grandpops. I got him. Oh, Steve, hello. <laughs> so nice it is to hear from you. It's a lovely day outside, no? Mm -hmm. Goodbye. But, Grandpops, uh, uh, Mr. Cassell, please, this is important. Is, is Vicky there? V Vicky? V oh, you mean my granddaughter, Vicky. Wait, wait, I, I, I go look. Now you... No, she's not, she says. Look, Steve, it is, it is no use. My, my money I take back. In opera and concert, all my life I live. And, and there I stay. No, no, Steve. Jazz, jazz is out. Goodbye. Such a heartache I have. For you, for Steve. For me also. And I called her a nice girl, not like the rest. Oh, no. I'd like to get my hands on her with homicidal intentions. If I never see her again, it'll be too much and too soon. Oh, let's quit griping and get down to facts. What are we going to do? That's very simple. <laughs> Nothing. Come in. Hello. Hi. I just dropped by to see if you changed your mind about me doing your show. If you want me... Just whistle. Good evening, Miss Wenty. Oh, Jeannie Pye, you can take the night off. Oh, thank you. It was sweet of you to see me home. After that cold shoulder I got from Steve. Well, he just doesn't appreciate a rich girl. Especially if she's wealthy. You're telling me. That's the reason I talked Vicky into quitting the show. What do you mean, you did? Well, her grandpa was broke, so I made a deal. She stepped out, and I stepped in. Gee, that sure is a break for us. You know, Jeffrey, I never realized before how sweet you are. I am. I mean, uh, am I? Very. And I do hate to be alone. Well, you're not alone when you're with me. Honestly. 
Mind if I slip into something more comfortable? No, no, I, I like girls in uh, slacks. I won't be long. Don't hurry on my account. Drinks are at the bar. the girl. What? So you can get her off your mind. What girl? The little one with the grandfather and the lights in her eyes. The one you're in love with. Vicky, I hope I never see her again. Oh, you've really got it bad. And you know, Steve, there's not a thing you can do about it. Either it wears itself out or you go on the way I do about Jeff. You've no problem with Jeff. No. And right now I imagine Elaine has no problem with him either. He's too sure of you, that's all. What he needs is competition. Competition. Can I help it if I'm a one-man woman with a two-woman man? Simple. Make a play for someone else. Watch him burn. That's him now. Here's what I mean. <sighs> Boy, am I glad to be home. What a time. You know, I'm exhausted. I walked all the way home. Except for the first two blocks, which I ran. What I need is a good hot cup of coffee. The, uh, you want some coffee, too? Oh, you. You. You're impossible. What's the matter? What did I do? It's what you didn't do. You're a bigger heel than Vicky. Vicky? Hey, that reminds me. You know what Elaine told me? It was she that got Vicky to give us the air. What? What did you say? Yeah, she just told me. How do you like that? Look, it all boils down to this. We gotta get Vicky in the show and Elaine out of it. Well, then we gotta get Elaine's money in, too. Yeah, but how? I gave her the idea, you figure it out. Suppose we tell her that she's too good for the show. Ah, uh, she knows better than that. Hey, what does Elaine like better than anything else in the world? Herself? No, sir, money. Which is what we have the least of. I got it. The fake telegram, telegram routine. routine. <laughs> <laughs> for you, Elaine. Open it and read it for me, will you? Okay. It's from your sugar ball in Texas. He says, I still love you, Madeline. I still have the wedding license we didn't use. That guy must be out of his mind. <laughs> huh? Oh, wait a minute. There's more. Listen. I also just brought in ten new gushers, all named Elaine. I have five million dollars more I don't know what to do about. Give me that telegram. Five million dollars? Huh? I'll show him what to do about them. How are you going to do it? Brother, this guy's heading for the last roundup, and I'm heading for Texas. Oh, what about the show, Elaine? You can't... Sue! Steve, where are you? Come in, come in. Did you call? You can't walk out on us, Elaine. I can't for five million bucks. What's the trouble? What's the matter? Is anything wrong? As far as I'm concerned, everything is five million percent okay. But Elaine, you just can't walk out on us. It isn't uh, croquet. Really? You weren't thinking of leaving us, were you? We're about to open, Elaine. And... We'd be sunk without you. Well, you're, you're a good trooper. So I'll be a good trooper next season. This season, I'm going to clip Sugar Bowl and the coupon. But Elaine, you can't. You mustn't. It'll ruin us. I guess it would be a pretty rotten trip. What? Oh, no. Uh, I'll find some way of stalling. No, no, Elaine, you can't. You mustn't. It'll ruin it. I mean, you might uh, lose that money. You know, you can't take... We've got to be big about this thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll get some second-rate girl and get her yeah. up in your numbers. Yeah. No, no, you don't. I'll just telephone Lammy and tell him he'll have to wait. Telephone? Oh. I'll go put a call through right away. Hey. Uh, you and your fake telegrams. Well, I... after she talks to Texas, then what? Oh, I'll think of something. I just thought of something. Hmm? A fake telephone routine. What? She'll get the call, only she won't. Are you sure you feel all right? Now, listen, Sue, you'll be the operator. I'll be Braden. And, Steve, you can make with the sound effects. Yeah? We'll get the backstage phone from the office. Come on. You've never been south of Brooklyn. All you got to do is remember to say, you all. I can do that. Hey. We better cancel that long distance call, Elaine, May, before we get crossed up. Yeah, yeah. How are you, sugar, you all? You all? I feel fine. Hmm? No, no, I'm just practicing my Texas dialect. That's the way I gotta talk over the phone, I old. <laughs> oh, 
Elaine, any luck on your call yet? She'll be coming through any minute. Oh, that it will. That it will. Hey, she's out there now. Huh? She's out there now. I'll get the backstage phone booth. Hello, honey. Give me the backstage phone booth. Texas calling Miss Elaine Winters. She sounds like she's from South Tacoma. She is. Hello. This is Miss Winters. Hold the wire, please. You all. You're on sugar bowl. <clears throat> Hello, you all, baby. Watch on your way to your sugar bowl. Uh, your, your, your lamb chop. Hmm? Why, lammy. Your voice sounds so different. Yeah, well, it's those new gushes, baby. They keep coming in all the time, making a lot of noise. I think you can hear those new gushes. Now, just listen. Maybe I can hold it up the phone. Here, here. I can hear it just like I was there. <laughs> you hear it? And one of the gushes is just gushed in the office here. I never saw so much oil. That's wonderful. Well, I love Johnny. Huh? You just naturally got to come down here and help me spend some of this mazula. Why, sure. Going to bring in another gusher, huh? We're going to start drilling, honey child. I think you can hear it over the phone. Listen, now we're drilling. Say, partner, this Elaine Winter's around? She expecting you? No, she ain't. I want to surprise her. Hear that? I think we're coming in. Listen! There she goes! <laughs> Another gush, just blew its top. Oh, this is getting monotonous. So, honey, the show's about to open and it's impossible for me to come to. I'm using it. Are you listening, baby? Listen to them, their oil well. Sing a song of my love for you all. Yeah, we're drilling for another one now. Black gold, that's what it is, honey. Black gold. Just keep right on talking. I'm beginning to weaken. Black gold, that's what it is, honey. Why, sugar, what a coincidence. Baby. Honey, I was just this minute talking. Uh, I mean, uh, thinking about you. <laughs> you know, Sugar, I just have to ask you once more to marry me. I just brought in 20 new gushers, and I got $10 million I don't know what to do with. Don't you worry, Lammy. I'll help you. So you got the first plane out of New York and come all down here to your lamb shop. I think it's working. She's practically speechless. <laughs> Yeah, so my little old heart is just pants on the side of you, honey child. Well, take a good look. It's cute. <laughs> honey child, you just... He, oh. you... <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth is pretty funny, too. It's ten million, not five. And I'm leaving right now to start enjoying it. Oh, you're quitting the show? What about the money? The show isn't paid for yet. Hmm, that's going to worry me terribly. Wait a minute, you signed a contract. If you walk out now, your name's going to be mud around here. Who cares? In Texas, it'll be Mrs. Braden. Yes, sir. And a Braden always honors a contract. Now, how much will you all take to give up my wife to be again? Did you say how much? Oh, he sit did. Down. Sit down. He sit down. Did. How much did your whole show cost? Just write in your name. Uh, we'll fill in the amount. <laughs> Don't let him clip you, honey. Clip me? <laughs> I love it. Just like my sheep. Makes me feel better. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 that. Some rest, Vicky. One more dress rehearsal, then tomorrow night's the big night. Everything worked out just right. Yeah, just that. Right. Look, look, Miles. Eh? Well, I certainly never expected to see this. We didn't exactly plan for you to see it. And, and Madame, did, did, did Madame return with you? No, I came on ahead, and I found out that you arranged that whole trip for Madame. Now, you forget, Vicky. You've signed me as your manager, and our contract definitely states that you cannot appear in any performance of which I don't approve. Martin, you wouldn't. You step on the stage at the opening of this show, and and it doesn't open. I'll get an injunction. A musical show. Rehearsals. What this has done to your voice may take months to remedy. It'll only take me five seconds to throw you out of here. You can't intimidate me. Oh, I can't. Uh, 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 I'll do you! Shh, shh, shh. Don't you know it? A big chance comes along, John Law walks in. Don't, don't get upset. Grandpa's he cooks up something. Tomorrow night, Vicky goes on. 
and gives John Lord the go by. This guy Martin can close the show, can he? The show. <laughs> close the show. With me, Ladislaus Cassell conducting. You, you conducting? Yeah. You can't conduct a show without preparation? <laughs> no, no preparation. You think I sit here all the time at the rehearsal with my ears buttoned down? <laughs> well, boys, I will try the whole score from finish to start. Maestro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ready, gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> you know, now if we only had those two guys, Rimsky and Korsakoff. <laughs> I did. Good evening, Simpkins. Good evening, madam. Oh, uh, uh, wait for me. Okay. It's simply incredible, Martin. I could hardly believe my ears when you phoned me long distance. It's the Belmore Theater. I'll go and collect my process service now. Well, I'll attend to this end of it. Will you, uh, will you be at the opening? I'll be there, but the maestro will not. Hurry up. Lucia! What are you doing here? I, I mean, how nice you are back. I'm glad to be back, Ladislaus. But what are you doing in that outfit so early? Hey, my darling. You oh. haven't answered me. You, you, you mean this? You know, I, 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 I am tired. I, I was just going to bed. Good, I don't sleep with you, eh? <laughs> Come, my darling. I plan to retire early, too. Yes, you, you go to bed and sleep. Maybe you should take five or six sleeping pills, to be sure. Five or six? I should say not. Maybe you are right. Take three or four. I shan't need any pills. All right, Lucia. I will take them. Good night, my darling. Good night, Darislau. Sleep well. <laughs> I will. You too. <laughs> Someone of the process services. Of course, this kid says he's got a note for you. What? what? Grandfather, where is it? It says you'll give me another five bucks. Somebody give me five yeah, dollars. Sure, sure. Uh, Steve, will you take care of it? Here. Yeah. I wrote this and threw it out the window. In the bedroom, your grandmother has me locked and all my clothes taken away. Do something quick or I won't be there tonight. Your loving grandfather. Come on. Well, what can we do? I don't know, but we're going to do it. I'll go out and tell funny stories till we get back. No, right? listen. Tell him to play the overture 40 or 50 times. Do something. Do anything. Anything? Anything. Okay, anything. Kathy. Uh, no, never mind. I haven't time right now. There should be some keys in the kitchen. Look in the basket on the desk there. Not there. They're gone. Grandmother thinks of everything. Maybe we can break his door down. You don't know the doors in this house. What's that? Nobody but me. It's nobody but grandfather. Grandfather. Get me out of here. Come on, my son. We gotta get to the theater. Theater? Dress like this? Here. Put on the butler's coat. That'll be a start. <laughs> what about trousers? We'll take care of that to theater. Come on.
did he ever get here? they do on a rainy night in Rio? What do they do when there is no starry sky? Where do they go when they can't go for a walk? Do they stay home and talk? Or do they sit and sigh, I, I? Where do they woo on a rainy night in Rio? Where does a gay senorita say, Cece? Maybe the girl wants a tender kiss. And yet... How tender can you get when you're beneath a wet palm tree? But what do they do in Mississippi when skies are drippy? And what do they do when it's murky in Albuquerque? And what do they do in Tijuana when they want a snuggle tight? Well, well that's, that's what they do in Rio on a rainy night. And what do they do when, when it's raining? In Pennsylvania. And what do they do when I'm Boise? Or in New Jersey. And what do they do when old Manhattan answers that and you'll be right? Well, that's, well, that's what, what they do in Rio on a rainy night. night. That's what they do in Rio on a rainy night. <laughs>
assuming that they have no galoshes. No Macintoshes. Well, then, if it starts to pitter patter, we haven't a choice in the matter. The weather outside is really frightening. And the boys are both afraid of lightning. Any time at all, it's raining cats at a door. process before the next number. Just a moment, Martin. I'll attend to this myself. restrains you from appearing in this show. If you do, you must be prepared to face the consequences. Did you bring a restraining order for my husband, too? Uh, no, madame. How unfortunate. He also is under your management and is just as guilty as our granddaughter. That's right, madame. How would you feel, Martin, if Maestro Cassell never again appeared under your management, which is what will happen if you serve those papers? What? Here are your papers, Mr. Drew. Uh, now serve them. Uh, Victoria, you seemed a little nervous and constrained. Let yourself go. And you, Ladislaus, kind of remember, this is not Beethoven. Swing it! Swing it! <laughs> now, Victoria, the show must go on. 